Welcome back with all the hosts, Ryan, Brennan, Dustin. <laughs> yeah, why'd you, say of Dustin. Dustin. <laughs> why'd you go, Ryan? <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad you Ryan? also did that. I was like, Brennan? <laughs> I guess that's what we're doing. He was so excited about getting the host. <laughs> I was, Ryan. Uh, Ryan. <laughs> oh, Ryan. Uh, Ryan. <laughs> Ryan. <laughs> Ryan. <laughs> Not a, I'm Ryan. I'm Ryan. I'm Ryan. I love Lamp. <laughs> I love Lamp. I love Lamp. And now for the runway report. The runway report. Runway report. What's going on at the school? What's going on? We had two planes go down for a hundred hour inspection. <sighs> yeah. Put a new Did- G5. G5 and Fort Two Hotel. We have lots of 100 hours. Good. We do have a bunch of 100 hours. But the new G5 is nice. Yes, the new G5 is nice. What's the new G5? It's a it's a digital oh. attitude indicator. Yes. So last time we talked about how y'all couldn't have a GPS because of the... Is that what... No. Oh, okay. Different plane. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Unfortunately, different plane. So we yes. didn't talk about this last time. Well, we talked about... 752 networking and that one's gone but not for the reason but not forgotten <laughs> but yes that not one's, forgotten but that it's one's not gone, for the radio yeah that one's gone for the 100 hour inspection okay. not for the radio still don't have a radio in that one well uh, well uh, okay wait let's go back what's the G5 what is okay. that in it's a digital attitude indicator for 42 Hotel so our attitude indicator pooped the bed and it wasn't gotcha. working anymore. So we replaced it with a digital one. Since the last podcast or yes. since the last gotcha. podcast. Yeah. That was put in like yesterday. Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, it was done yesterday. It was Completed. put in like started Saturday. Oh. Gotcha. Yep. Completed yeah. yesterday. Yep. So, so that's nice. Yeah. Next yep. is we another G5 of- for that uh for that uh for that, that uh heading indicator. Yeah, the next one's a heading indicator. And then an it. autopilot, and there you go. We got a TAA. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? No, we got the Cirrus. We can't forget about the Cirrus. Don't. Yeah. Don't be careful with the Cirrus. Don't, don't, sorry, don't spin sorry. the prop. Don't. Sorry. Yeah. Don't? No. Ryan gets mad. Why? Because it's not made to spin. It's not? No, I'm not it's gonna not. Spin it. I'm not going to spin it. Oh, it took, oh, yeah. It really oh, no, is. No, no, it's not made to spin. <laughs> it. no, push it's a fix, bitch. Yes. No, 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 no. Push it a little harder. It spins. Oh, it does? It doesn't. There's no bearings, so it doesn't like keep spinning like you would hope. Oh. but it Because I went and flicked it, and he was like, hey, don't, don't do that. It's, it's the, this <laughs> but thing. But it does turn. It, it, oh, a little bit. But this, yeah. is, this is for viewing only, yeah. not touch. But yeah, got the G5. Got the G5. It's nice. But yeah, 752, the other one that had the radio problems, it went down for 100-hour inspection. Then after that, it's supposed to go to the radio shop to get the... Radio fix, but actually, it's been working good, right? Hadn't it been working yeah. last time you flew it? It worked yes. good, didn't it? It's been yeah. working good. So, once we take it to the radio shop, they'll take say there's it. nothing wrong with it. Then it's going to come back and not uh, work, not work, not work, yeah, pretty much. Yep, that's what's going to happen. Like everything in life, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, I can't tell you how many times something has happened. And I'll be like, oh, it's not working. I'll go get Ryan. And he'll come out. And he was like, oh, it's working fine now. So, <laughs> wait, hold, hold on a second. <laughs> yeah, that was 20 minutes. What did you do? <laughs> I turned it on. <laughs> yeah, I turned it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I asked him one time. I was like, how'd you get it working? He was like, I just turned it on and got it working. I was like, I don't get it. He was like, don't try. <laughs> don't, try. Yeah. don't try and get it. It's no. just simply one of those. Have you tried turning it off and on again? Yeah. He's like, don't try and get it because you're just, not going to get just it. Just let it happen. Be just, happy it's working. <laughs> <laughs> We're here. And yeah. It's working. We'll deal with the problem when it comes. Yeah. A lot of times it needs to break, break. Breaker, breaker. Breaker, breaker. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that's next, what you gotta so, do. So next time something's not working, <laughs> and you need to run, start, just destroy it and be like, Ryan, I don't, I don't know what happened. What did you do? Hey, fix this. <laughs> Took a sledgehammer to it real quick. We had another student pass his private check ride today. Uh, within the last 20 minutes of this podcast. Yes. Yeah, so that's Woo! exciting. Woo! Looked like it was going to rain really bad. Yes, it, the rain looked like it was coming, you know, while he was on his check ride. Yeah, it's but, coming. But they said they said the weather was nice where they went, so. Got it know, done. You got it done. Got it taken care of. What else? What else? <laughs> We've just been flying. 
That's what we always do. Um, That's what we're here to do. Besides that, though, we're here (laughs) to teach Uh, people how to fly. mm -hmm. But besides that, you have an instructor learning how to instruct. We got a couple of instructors learning how to instruct. Another one adding and writing to his instructor license. He was teaching me how to do a hold. Nice. You didn't know how to do a hold? No. Mm -mm. Nope. Nope. (laughs) Don't know what. Don't know what that is, and he was telling me what that is. And did he explain it well? Um, yeah, for the most part. <laughs> for the most part. <laughs> did you get in there? Did you have to explain it to him so that he could explain it to you? Yeah. Well, look. I, <laughs> since I didn't know how to do it, I right, looked right. in a book uh, and I saw some other stuff, and I asked him those questions. Gotcha. gotcha. Yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah. And then he told me. Yeah. Yeah. I need that instructor to get his multi as well. I need him oh, to. Yeah. yeah. I told him like, as soon as you're done with double I, just get roll the, right into yeah, multi. Get multi done. Yeah. Are you trying to get as many people with multi here so Ryan will get a multi? <laughs> is that the <laughs> That'd be a good incentive, huh? Yeah. <laughs> what else is going on? Uh. That's the <laughs> thumbnail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here, folks. He said I could use it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we do have a few guys that are getting their CFIs working on it. Both of them need to take their written. Yeah, they're working on it. And me and Sean did some FOI stuff the other day. Talked about some defense mechanisms and. Maslow's hierarchy of needs and airspace is a big one everybody struggles with. Why? There's a a lot of complex airspace. It's just a lot of information. So like people have a hard time memorizing. It's all memorization. So So it's it's not really understanding. It's not really understanding. It's more of a you got to memorize all these different airspaces and what altitudes they go to and what color is on the chart and what kind of airspace that is and Kind Is of there weather. a simple way to remember? Uh, some people do the little triangle thing. Yeah, there's some little. kind of triangle thing that I don't know about. Uh, I don't do that either. And okay. I did the air traffic control class with an air traffic controller. He came in to teach? He came in to teach. Oh, well, that's kind of cool. Yeah. We have him every once in a while whenever he's willing. Let's get some pre-solo advice. Slip to landing. Some people have a hard time with oh, the slips to landing. That's a good one to talk about. Yeah. There we yeah. go. Hey, that's what's a, a slip to a landing? So, it's a slip to a landing. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, we don't actually know. Yeah, either. we don't actually know what it is. We just kind of be doing it. Yeah. <laughs> so, if you got your little airplane here, and so you need, you're too high and you need to land, you do the slip to a landing. And so, you push the rudder and you push the aileron and it bring and push the nose down. And you lose a lot of altitude quickly. Yeah. So, we have, so the slip helps you fall faster. Yeah. You come out the sky faster. Creates makes a bunch of drag fast. and yeah, makes you makes you come down faster. But we have to teach the private students when they're getting a private license how to do that so that they can in case of emergency or if they're flying a plane without flaps or whatever, you know. So Yep. We have to practice that. And so they have to hit a point and the um it's kinda difficult at first. Well, I think they because just because it's it's a feeling. The, yeah, they usually don't like the feeling of the plane being crooked and down and like. Is know. it complex to do, or is it just no. the feeling of kind of scary no. feeling of yes. dropping and corner? It, it's just sideways. weird. It's like imagine flying to go land. Like they've been training for the last who who knows how long to stay straight and yeah. keep your nose straight. Use that rudder coordination mm-hmm. to there stay straight, and, and now so, they're going completely uncoordinated. Yes. Yeah. And yeah, and now their nose is down, they're sideways, they're using their airline to stay straight with the the runway and whatnot. But it just helps if you, if they, like I said, everything helps whenever you understand the why. Um, yep. The whole point of it is to create more drag whenever you're going down, right? So a lot of people, what they do wrong is whenever they go, they'll just pick a side to go full rudder on. And then say the wind's coming from this direction, one person will put like full left rudder 
and they'll point their nose straight into the wind. And I was like, well, son, you just made yourself more aerodynamic <laughs> and you're not going to, you just created less drag. So, so if they can understand that, then they can look down and say, okay, where's my wing coming from? Let me create the most drag by showing the side of my plane, right? So if the wind's coming from this direction, I want to turn this way. That way, this whole side of my plane is facing that wind and creating a bunch of drag to get down faster. That is what's creating the drag to get the plane down. What's creating the tilt is you using your aileron, because think about it, if you were at full right rudder, right, and you were going this way, it's going to make you go to the right, and you're not going to stay aligned with the runway. So to fight that turn to the right, you have to give left aileron which is a roll to the left gotcha. and that's what's keeping you center and that's what's making you tilt. Right. So to fight that right y'all, you give it a little bit of a left roll to stay centered with the runway. And that's what makes you feel all cock eyed. You're uncoordinated. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Uncoordinated. And that's the third biggest thing is your speed. If I wouldn't have done that last video, I wouldn't ha yeah. literally have a clue what y'all yeah. were talking yeah. about. So watch our video about rudder coordination. There you go. I see people that do slips and they'll just put the nose down and they'll get super, super fast and they'll go like top of the wide arc almost. Do you teach them to just oh. put the nose down as fat, how far as they can go? No, no, not as far as you can go. No, I, I just, I, the only thing I teach to go to the stop is the rudder. So like I usually tell them go all the way to the stop on the rudder and then bank as much as bank you need to stay aligned with the center line, you know, so you don't drift off the runway center line and then just push the nose down. But I don't want them to go full. That Man, that'd be all kinds of speed. Yeah. Well, yeah, that, so I just I just say push your nose down. Hold your approach speed. Yeah. So like different, the, each airplane is a little bit different. Like the Cirrus doesn't build up that much speed. I know 752 kind of seems to build a lot of speed. And well, I, don't I feel notice. like people do it like – instinctively because like they're trying to get down right yeah so like they just push down yeah and then they build up a bunch of speed but i feel like they're putting them si themselves farther back by doing it because like you're gonna lose the altitude whether you're pushing the nose down or not you may get down a little bit faster if you push down but you're gonna get down faster with a whole bunch more airspeed and then that yeah. comes in with the problem with yeah well floating landing on your point yeah because uh, but also your aiming point. So if you decide it where your if your aiming point is closer to you than you know your touchdown point needs to be farther away. So I try to do the five hundred feet so that you got that area to lose that speed. So you'll float a little ways and usually you'll touch down right at the thousand foot marks if yeah. you aim if that's your touchdown if point. If you have a good speed. Yes. And not too fast. That's what I thought. Yes. I was teaching people to hold a press speed, but I see some people Shove yeah, it down. you don't want to lock your like shove you don't want to shove it all the way down. No, Start going man, real fast. you'll just end up in the trees on the other end of the runway. The checklist, do your checklist, <laughs> do your checklist. <laughs> <laughs> That's another hard thing in itself is just figuring out like when to start it, kind of thing. Yeah, you know? when to start. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of the hardest part because I always try to keep people at a thousand feet. Mm -hmm. And then you stay high and then you got to slip it down to try to make your point. So where do I start? That's where the practice comes in. Cause once you've done it a few times, you know, oh, this is about right. And I just judgment. Try. Yeah. It's judgment. It's experience and judgment. That's right. And if you don't do it enough, you're not going to know because yep. you get people that, you know, the first time they do it, they start five miles out and they start slipping and I'm like, okay, stop. Do yeah, you well, think <laughs> yeah. you need to slip? Well, if you were in a situation right now, do you think you would need to slip from where we are to get down on that point? Yeah. And they'd be like, no. I'm like, then why are we starting it five miles out? Well, I guess that people don't understand why they're doing this. So what's, what am I doing this for? You know, like, yeah. why am I doing this? Give us a couple examples. Because uh, emergency is the biggest one. Yeah, emergency what? is the biggest one. Emergency. Simulate emergency. Let's say you had an emergency. You did all your checklists because you're supposed to do your checklists. And <laughs> and you get over your field that you picked out and you're trying to land, but you're too close and you're too high. So how do you get down? Well, I put all my flaps in and I'm still high. So now I'm going to do a slip. And I do the slip to lose altitude a lot faster so that I can land in my field safely and not in the trees. So instead of being like, 
oh, I picked the wrong field. I need to look for another one that's a little bit further away. You'd be mm-hmm. like, no, I can still land in this field. Yes, I can fix it. Yeah. Yeah. So, but the, because the risk of like changing your field is not making the next one because you don't have any engine power. So you're just going to gliding or gliding around and. Well, and the. the <laughs> just like that. Just like just this. Just like that. Just like that. <laughs> like tossing the paper airplane. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Well, and the the problem with changing the fields too is I tell people all the time is like the students they'll go and they're like, oh, I, I'm too high, I'll land in that field. I'm like, what if we were in a situation where we didn't have another field? Yeah. Like, what if that's yeah. the field? Yeah. Like, what if that is the only field you have an option? Well, to if land you go in? to North Louisiana, you, all you got is trees everywhere. So yeah. whatever field you pick, you have that you have to stick. That with is it. the field. There is yeah. no other field. Yeah. If you, you go over in Georgia, like around Atlanta and stuff, you got trees everywhere yeah whenever they do that they're given their like a scapegoat like of like oh i couldn't make this field but this field's right there it's like that that you didn't really teach yourself anything right you 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 basically said i had poor judgment in this situation but because i had another field right on the side it, it's okay well no we're gonna stay at this field and you're gonna fix it that's the hard part for anything in the beginning is like judging judging how high anything and what to do. Like in some cases where like I'm just too close, I don't want to do a slip because I might build up too much airspeed and not make my field. I always tell students like you could do an S turn. Mm-hmm. And so S turns don't you don't you just turn one way and then turn back the other way. And you like don't an S. You'd mm-hmm. like an S just like an S <laughs> S turns and you don't gain that much airspeed, but you lose some altitude quick. Not as much distance towards the place yeah. you want to land. Yeah. So what's the pros and cons of doing that as opposed to a slip? I don't think there is a really a pro. They're both tool. There is no one way gotcha. is better than the other. Deciding whether to do a slip or not do a slip depends on how long your field is, how close you are, how much airspeed. How high you, you are. How high you are. Because you got to think about the speed too. Because if you don't have the space to bleed off your airspeed, you're going to float mm-hmm. and end up. Missing the field. And there's sometimes that people, they use both of it. Like the other day we were coming in on emergency, on an emergency for Brant. He was coming in on uh, a field and he was turning final, like lining up with the, with the field. And he knew he was too high, too high to even slip down. So he was like, okay, I'm going to do, he did a quick turn, like a 360, not like a slow, slow 360, but did another 360 and then started his slip. So that was another way that he utilized some some other stuff to help him get down. He could have done an S turn and then come out of the S turn and then said, "Okay, now I'm high enough to start a slip." It's like preparing your slip mm-hmm. by like like a little cuz sometimes you're just too high. When when you're doing the slip for your check ride, I tell people, you know, you'd rather be high, but there's a fine line between being high and like way too high. Like, I'm just not going to make it. Like, I'm just too high to make this field kind of thing. I have time to pick another field. Yeah. Like, if I'm at a 1,000, I'm not coming in on this field. Of course, I can slip down and I can make it. But if you're at that same position at 3,000 feet, you're not slipping down to make that field. Like, that's not going to be what happens. So, instead of doing that, you're going to do a couple turns, a couple 360s, lose some altitude until you can get to that point to where, like, you can make a decision to either slip or go Keep out. Keep going slow yeah, around. Yeah. Until- yeah, it's all judgment. And that's the hard part of all of it is because you don't have a lot of experience. So you don't know what right looks like. And I guess it ends up being whatever you're comfortable doing to make it. Yep. 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 But it's just another tool in our toolbox of maneuvers that we can use to get down. Yeah. Slip. 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 slip that thing. Yeah, slip it on down. <laughs> In the air, can y'all tell, besides for feeling, can y'all tell wind? Like y'all have, like y'all are flying, so I feel like it's hard if there's like a thing. Not an instrument. There's not an instrument that says anything about wind. I get what you're saying, no. There's not an instrument telling you wind, but. No, I guess y'all have. Well, we have to look at other stuff. Now, since we have the fancy G5, Mm -hmm. it'll tell us wind direction. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. It'll tell us wind. You know, like the Cirrus tells you the wind direction. But, like, if you don't have all that, then, yeah, you have to look at, you like, smoke it. and kind of figure out where trees. it's coming from, gotcha. trees. If you know. Walter. If you l- Walter. If you listen to one of the airport's automated weather, you know, have an idea. I, I forgot they had you, those. You got the radio. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, th- think about it though, an emergency, and then say you don't have the weather on, you got to type in the frequency or something like yeah. that. Sometimes yeah. that's not practical, that, but right. if you have time to do it, like, yeah, yeah, do it. Yeah, but, and that's like, you know, that situation's kind of like we're out here practicing it, so we kind of know where the winds yeah. are because. We just listened to it like 30 minutes ago. Right. So. Or checked it on the way out. Yeah. Like, I yeah. guess also if you don't know which way the winds are, wind is, this is just from someone who's not a pilot. As you, like if you start doing S turns first, you could probably feel where it's coming and be like, this is the, the slip. Yes. You could feel where, you know, because if you turn this way and you were going faster away from the airport and then you turn this way and you were going slower over the ground, you'd know that my wind's probably coming from this direction now. So, so now I know where to slip to yep. or whatever. Yeah, yep. That's cool. Judgment. Yes. Experience. Yes. Everybody, yeah, with the slip, like people get nervous with the slip just because you feel like you're doing this kind of yeah. while you're in the slip. And so that don't feel right. We're not supposed to be doing this in an airplane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not supposed to be leaning over like this. But that's the point. Yeah. Like, you're probably also not supposed to be feeling like your plane's going to crash. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And you're just coming down out the... <laughs> you're going to feel scared. weird to they survive. Real, yes. Yeah. They get real scared. <laughs> they're coming out of it early, like whenever... Because yeah. uh, they're getting closer to the ground, they don't want to come out. I'm like, ah, keep that thing Yeah, in. yeah. <laughs> that's no, right. No, <laughs> no, 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 please. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> please don't do this. <laughs> They, <laughs> I do feel like a lot of people don't understand the slip or what's going on in a slip too. Cause you'll get some people that do a slip and they got power in still or something oh, yeah, like that. Yeah. And yeah. I'm just like, so is it that they forget or that they don't know? I don't know. I don't think it's, I, I think it's a mixture. Sometimes they forget it, but I think some people don't know. Like I think some people think like, Oh, I'm going to go into the slip and I'm just going to lose a bunch of altitude. So whenever y'all tell them to do that, do you assume they know? No, we don't. We tell them most of the time. Yeah, pull that power out. Don't leave that power in there. So you're talking about the people that have either done it before or should know. I'm talking about, say I teach you how to do a slip and I say, hey, pull your power to idle, come into the slip, do it like this. And then they come around and they do it. They forget, pull the power power to idle because they don't understand the true meaning of why I need to pull the power. It's time for Tower Talk. Tower Talk. I got a progressive taxi the other day. What's that? Uh, That's where the tower tells you where to turn on what taxiway and how to get to where you're going when you're on the ground. Did you not know that? No, I was just messing with I feel with like you it. do this a lot. <laughs> I was, I I was feel messing. like we fly here a lot. Like you should know where you like, are. Hey, right? Where's my school again? <laughs> no, we were we were messing with the uh, the controller. Oh. Yeah, because he, he said, uh, okay, taxi down Bravo, cross four, uh, four left, straight ahead. And we said, uh, uh, we need a progressive. And Man, he thought it was funny. <laughs> it was hilarious. But other than that, no tower, tower. The only thing was we had the tower guy come and teach one of the classes. But yeah, that that's was cool. now yeah. time for today in aviation history. 1908 at Fort Myer, Orville Wright sets a world record for flight endurance with a passenger. Army Major George O. Squeer. Probably Squire. Squire. Squeer. Squeer. <laughs> Squeer. <laughs> Can I say Squeer? <laughs> no, we're going to have to bleep that out. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Squire of nine minutes, six and th- a third seconds. Okay. That's oddly specific. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> In 1900, the Wright brothers arrive at Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, to begin their first season of glider experiments there. Really? 1900, huh? 1900. Think about that. When when did they fly first? Uh, mm. <laughs> mm. It's a good question. <laughs> yeah. Maybe some, happened. Maybe somebody that went to college could tell me. <laughs> it's 1903. Oh, so you knew. Yeah. <laughs> 1903 is when they first flew. The, see, this is the glider stuff. So they, they started off with a glider. Right. And then they threw an engine on it. And 1903 was the first fl- powered flight. Yeah, they didn't get high, didn't they? No. It was like they, 30 feet off the ground. Yeah, it wasn't high at all. <laughs> like, uh, whoa! And wait, and it was like... It was like like six seconds or something. Yeah, yeah it wasn't yeah. long. Yeah, it was I do like remember that. that. I do yeah, remember seeing long. a picture of that. <laughs> it was like wasn't very high, wasn't very long, but they did fly. Yep, they flew. It's like this is the picture of the first flight, and they're like holding it up. Like, yeah. they're trying, like, they're <laughs> no, it's like they were like above the trees, like barely. I was like, oh, I didn't know they were that high. Yeah, it was like 
not that high. I mean, it's some small trees. I thought it was like, like 15 feet in the air. No, it was, I mean, they yeah. got so it was some good bit. air. Okay. Yeah, some good Decent air. Decent air for like yeah. 30, 40 feet. For the in first air. flight. Yeah. Yeah. If you fell, you'd hurt. Yeah. Like, there we go. <laughs> it would hurt. That's how we justify <laughs> if you're flying. <laughs> if it fell, would it hurt? Yeah, you were flying. <laughs> yeah, you were flying. <laughs> but that's crazy, though. Think about that. 100 years? Look at like. Where it's been? Oh, it's it, it's changed a lot in a hundred years. That's and insane. Like where we're at now, it's yeah, it is insane. What but it's crazy, even like to think like the amount of change in such a small time, and then how good we got at it, and then the progress. I'd say kind of slowed, right? Oh, I that's, mean, that's all technology. It's insane though how that works. Like we went from 1900s a glider with a little lawnmower engine on the front to in like the 1950s having jet engines. Yeah. Like flying jets, 737s around yeah. pretty much. And then like it's been pretty much the it's I mean, been the same pretty much yeah but it's jet engines like yeah. i mean you're still teaching on 1970s planes yeah, yeah. i mean yeah. like it just we just decided like hey this is as good as it gets brother this so, is it. and like you know if uh fuel injection came in in the 1990s you know around that time like for cessna like 172s and stuff so you know, I guess that's about the same time as cars, fuel injection and stuff. And like, we're still working off. In the 1990s? No, it you started think that's in the, the 80s. same time as cars? No, it fuel 80s? injection for cars. Oh. <laughs> yeah, fuel yeah, injection. No. Now time for some cockpit comedy. How come pilots from Thailand are able to fly fighter spaceships? Because they are naturally Thai fi fighters. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I don't find airplane jokes funny. Jumps? So let me do it again. Yep. <laughs> I don't find airplane jokes funny. To me, they're just really Boeing. <laughs> <laughs> Boo. <laughs> <laughs> really Boeing. Do, do they have to be uh, funny? <laughs> I mean, you said, I couldn't stop laughing though because you said airplane junks. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> Like what? That's what, that's what we both because I think for like half a second we were both like, did you no, mean to say jokes or like? Because he no. didn't even stop. He just kept going. Yeah, <laughs> and then, I was hoping and then, nobody noticed. That's what was I was no, hoping. There was no hesitation either. He said, "Let me read that again." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if you messed up because he said jokes and you froze and you're like. Let me read that again. <laughs> One of those, I don't want to admit I was wrong. I'm just going to do it again. I'm just going to read that again. <laughs> I was hoping nobody noticed, and I was just going to keep talking on. talking into a microphone. I was going like, to just keep going. And now the final approach. <laughs> ATC uh, meeting. <laughs> yeah. One of these Someday. days, we're going to do an ATC meetup. You know what? One one thing I want to do, you know, since we're a serious training center, is uh, <laughs> we need to have... We need to actually, you know, once it starts cooling off, call the Cirrus guys and have them bring some Cirruses over and cook some food and ooh, yeah, some pancakes or whatever, you know. <laughs> I hear, I know a guy who cooks some good pancakes. Oh yeah, yeah. He wears a chef's hat and a and a child's size apron. <laughs> <laughs> I was lost and now you got me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm there now. He, he was talking about the flying pancake. Check out our video about the flying pancake. I'll link to it in the podcast. It's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like pancakes aren't hard to make. Like, <laughs> I love how that's where your mind went first. Like yeah. not burgers, yeah. not like no, anything. Yeah. Like he was like, <laughs> uh, pancakes, pancakes or whatever you're making. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like what? Of all things, we'll have a serious yeah, pancake. <laughs> we'll make an event next time. We'll have an event for y'all. What event should we do? We should do a an event. Yeah, a we're gonna fundraising. We're, we're gonna find we out about that ATC meetup. We're gonna call the tower. I was gonna say we don't have to try to figure it out now. We could just no, say, no, we're not gonna do it now. We're no, just we're gonna we're just it gonna, out. we're gonna we're coming soon in the next episode. A flight tales. A flight tales. Flight tales. Woo. Flight sales, woo-woo!
If you made it this far, you listened to the entire episode. And for that, we would just like to say thank you, and we hope you enjoyed it. We would also like to thank Brennan Go for being my co-host today. If you have any questions about today's episode or suggestions for future episodes, just leave a comment or message us, and we'll do our best to answer. If you'd like to check out some fun aviation videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel at Owens Flight Training. Or if you'd like to get more information on becoming a safe, knowledgeable, and confident pilot, just head over to our website, owensflighttraining.com. 